Reviewing Unity. Unity uses the Entity Component System model. Each game object is an entity, and this is a container for its components. Components correspond to different systems. When an event happens or message is sent, the component receives the data from the corresponding system. Systems include named systems such as rendering, physics, and other things. The Entity Component System model uses a set of systems that run in a specific order to send data to components, which are part of entities. In Unity specifically, we create game objects. These are the core units of Unity, the entities. And we create them as part of the hierarchy view. So the hierarchy, the order in which objects relate to each other as either within the same scene or parent or child of each other. When we select a game object in the hierarchy view, we see its components and their properties, their values, as shown in the inspector view. We navigate between entities and their components by using the hierarchy and inspector views. And by default, the hierarchy view is on the left and the inspector view is on the right. Between these two views, the hierarchy view showing the entities, the game objects, and the inspector view, their components and properties, is the scene view. This shows the placement of objects in space based on their properties. And by default, all game objects have a transform component with their position, rotation, and scale values. Let's pause right here before we do anything else and move over to look at Unity itself. I have Unity pulled up right here. We see over on the left-hand side is the hierarchy view with the list of corresponding game objects within this scene. And there's currently just a main camera. Over on the far right is the inspector view. Because nothing is currently selected in the hierarchy view, nothing appears over in the inspector view. And of course, between these two views is the scene view, showing anything within the current space of the scene. If I select a game object over here in the hierarchy view, for example, main camera, its corresponding components and their values, their properties, show up over in the inspector view. By default, all game objects have a transform component. Transform right here with position, rotation, and scale. Because this is a special type of game object, a camera, it has a camera component right here. But note, over here in the hierarchy view, we can add empty game objects or special types of game objects that come pre-prepared with very specific components that, of course, talk to those corresponding systems. But we can always create an empty game object with the default name of game object right here. And when selected, we notice over here, game object for its name as an entity and always, by default, transform component with position, rotation, and scale. In Unity, there is a set order in which systems run. The order is initialization, physics, input, game logic, rendering, and decommissioning. The first and the sixth initialization and decommissioning only happen once per game object. That is, everything is initialized, and then it moves into a gameplay loop for physics input, game logic, and rendering in that order over and over and over and over again, creating the main gameplay loop of doing any physics calculations, detecting any input, doing any game logic, handling that input, and then rendering everything before repeating over again. If a game object is removed from a scene or otherwise destroyed, it then enters into its decommissioning order. When we create script components, we are intercepting all messages for that game object. And we are telling Unity that we may respond to or react to very specific events and messages from all systems to all components corresponding to that game object. We are essentially putting ourselves, the script component, between the systems and the components, which allows us to script, that is, use code to change various things as part of Unity. So by default, when we create a script component, it automatically creates a class that is a child of mono behavior. The mono behavior class contains two default methods, the start method, which is called as part of the initialization system, and the update method, which is called as part of the rendering system or each frame. 
We can also listen for other specific events based on the event name. And these correspond to whatever components happen to also be a part of the game object. So for example, if the game object had a component which would generate or listen for a click event, we could add a onClick method as part of our script component code, which would then listen for that event, and we could correspondingly react to it. Let's move back to Unity and see this in action before we end this video. So over in Unity then, if I have a game object, notice selected over in the hierarchy view, and we are seeing its components over here in the inspector view, I can add a component, scroll to the bottom, add a script component, new script. For the name new behavioral script, I will accept the default and create an add. This will add a new script component, a component of this game object, not the game object itself, but a script component within the game object. And it will also add a new C -sharp file corresponding to the name. We see new behavioral script and in parentheses script and then down here, new behavioral script. Notice it automatically added two default methods, start again corresponding to the initialization system and update corresponding to the rendering system or called once per frame. So we can see here then that Unity breaks things down according to the entity component system model. Game objects are entities, each of which hold individual components. The default component of all game objects is the transform component, holding its position rotation and scale, as we see right here, position, rotation, and scale. We can also add to any game object a script component. This allows us to listen for messages exchanged between systems and components and react in different ways. We can, by default, listen for the initialization system corresponding to the start method and the update method corresponding to the rendering system. This allows us to use these two systems to do various things. One, when the code initially starts up, the start method corresponding to initialization, and the update method corresponding to when things are rendered. We can also add other events and methods as needed. If we want to listen for particular events, assuming a component is capable of receiving that event for the game object, something like a click, for example, we can also use on click method as part of our code to listen for that particular event and do a reaction or course or something corresponding to that system. But as a reminder, entity component system, which each system running in a very specific order within Unity, exchanging information with the corresponding components to those systems, all of which are in individual game objects, which serves as the entities. And when we create a script component, a component of the game object, not the game object itself, we can then listen for those messages exchanged between the system and other components within the same game object and do different things such as intercept input events and change our corresponding position and rotation or affect physics in different ways.